Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wassalamu ala Rasulullah. We continue reading from the 40 principles of the religion, the 40 fundamentals of the religion, and the 40 of the religion, by Imam Razayad, rahmanullah. Wa nafa'na bi'un fi darayn. And inshallah, today we'll complete the 40th uh, principle, the 10th of the 10th, of the 4th quarter, on remembering death. And the very last uh, thing that we have read, during the last uh, session as a, a, a tradition um, here in the text of Imam al-Ghazali and the translation is attributed to revelation uh, but really it's uh, it was uh, uh, verified uh, and it, it is a statement that belongs to Ibn Abbas, uh, Sayyidina Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah on the day of the, of the resurrection, the world will be shown in the form of an old cyanotic hag, an old lady, uh, an old ugly. Uh, it reminds me of the uh, images uh, or the image of uh, witches in uh, movies. Her qualities are such and such and such and such. No one will see her without saying, I seek refuge with Allah from her. Then it will be said, This is your world that you were so deeply concerned about. Hence, people will find within themselves humiliation and disgrace over which they would prefer hellfire. If you want to understand how this disgrace occurs, then listen to the story of a man from the sons of kings who married the most beautiful woman from the daughters of kings. And now we talk about the disturbing, um, really, um, narrative at the beginning. Uh, let's basically reach the end of it, and then we'll comment if there is need, really. He drank on his wedding night and became drunk. As a result, he mistakenly went to the wrong door, he exited from the house, and got lost, he saw the light of a torch, and so made his way for it, thinking that it was from his room. Upon entering the place, he saw a group of a group sleeping, so he cried out to them, but no one answered, assuming they were asleep. He searched for the bride, he saw a woman sleeping in new clothes, thought she was the bride, and lay next to her. He began kissing her and holding her, putting her tongue in his mouth and sucked her saliva, enjoying all of this intensely in his drunkenness. He rubbed the moisture coming off her body, thinking that it was perfume she had kept for him. Now, uh, the, uh, the reality, that was... A description, don't really take it for face value. Listen to the reality. When he woke in the morning, sober, now he, uh, sober meaning that the uh, effect of, uh, of alcohol in him has gone. He realized that he was in a Zoroastrian mausoleum and that the sleepers were dead. He had been enjoying an old hag who had recently died and was covered with embalming fluid and a new shroud in his mouth and nose where the moisture of her saliva and mucus and on his body was the excrement of her bottom. He, he was now covered from head to toe in her filth. You see how the, uh, the narrative shifted dramatically. Um, it's literally disgusting. He then began to think about how he had been on top of her and how he had swallowed her saliva. His heart was assaulted by humiliation so severe that he wished Allah would cause the air to swallow him. 
so that he might forget what had occurred. However, the memory of it did not cease to recur. He could not forget it at all. Rather, he felt as if his repugnant deed were represented before him and wished that between him that between him and it was a vast expanse. Although his body was detached from agony, he was in constant torment due to, to nausea and vomiting whenever he recalled this disgrace. It grieved him to think that anyone would become aware of it and thereby multiply his humiliation. Then suddenly he found himself with his father whose entire entourage had come seeking him and seen all of his disgrace. Before I continue reading, I would like simply to mention one thing. It's, uh, I'm no expert on uh, Zoroastrian uh, death culture, but uh, to my knowledge, they leave the dead on uh, this is what i what i know they leave the dead on top of uh, of mountains just uh, you know for the uh, hawks and and vultures and what have you to uh, they will consume them i'm, I'm not sure about uh, mausoleum as being the proper place but maybe it was during that time maybe there are different uh, uh, practices I continue with, with what Imam Ghazali with what Imam Ghazali said this is the state of whoever takes pleasure in the world its spiritual reality is revealed to him like this in the afterlife this is the meaning of Allah's statement in the Quran. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَحُصِّلَ مَا فِي الصُّدُورِ Whatever is in the breast is brought forward, extracted uh, in the language of today. Yeah, it's good. It is known really. It is known. Everything will be uh, explained. You know, exposed. This means that it is it, that its true substance is shown. That is its spiritual reality. Likewise, it is the meaning of uh, another uh, part of the Quran. يَوْمَ تُبْلَ السَّرَائِرِ The day when secrets are exposed. This means that the secrets of deeds and their spiritual realities, whether repugnant or beautiful, are revealed. Just as the most delicious food turns to nasty, stinking excrement, likewise are the most enjoyable worldly pleasures. Their true substance and secret in the afterlife is even more repugnant and disgraceful. For this reason, Allah's Messenger وسلم, likened the world to food, its ultimate end its, is excrement. Allah alam about the verification of this uh, hadith. The third type is regret over the passing of beloved things. Imagine that you have entered into some darkness with a group of your companions. In this darkness where there is a stone whose color is not visible. Imagine that your companions said, carry whatever you are able to from this, for perhaps it will, be, it will benefit us when we get out of the darkness. You would say, what will I do with it? Should I carry its load and exhaust myself when I do not know the ultimate end of the situation? This is nothing but great ignorance. 
The rational person surely does not abandon actual comfort for what he expects is potentially advantageous, yet is not certain. So your companions each take whatever he is able to take, but you turn away, considering them ignorant fools and ridicule them because they wage your potentiality beyond the heavy burden. On the way out, you are cracking jokes and laughing at them. But when they get past the darkness, they look and see the, that the stones are gems, each one equaling a thousand dinars. They proceed to sell them and through them attain status and luxury and become landowners. They take you and use you to look after their animals and give you every day a paltry amount of leftover food. Now, how will you, how will, do you see the burning of regret, of regret's fire in your heart, even though your body is detached from it? How much you will say? And now Imam Ghazali quotes from the Quran, Ya hasrata ala ma farrattu fi jan billah. Oh what, a, oh, what pity for what I forsook with Allah. And if only we could return and do other than what we did, you will say to your companions, give us some of what was given to you. They will reply, this is prohibited for you. Did you not ridicule us and laugh at us? Today we ridicule you just like you used to ridicule us. Your heart does not cease to be torn from regret. Regret does not benefit you, but you console yourself and say, death will relieve me from all of this. Does it? Know that the state of one who forsakes Acts of obedience will be revealed to him like this in the afterlife. However, there is no hope for the re relief of death. Rather, it is perpetual. Rather, it is a perpetual, everlasting regret, the pain of which is multiplied every day, even though the body is detached from it. This is expressed in Allah's uh, statement in the Quran, subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَفِيضُ عَلَيْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ وَمِمَّا زَقُنْكُمُ اللَّهِ قالوا إن الله حرمهما على الكافرين. Give us some water or some of what Allah has provided you with. They will reply, Allah has prohibited it for the disbelievers. This is because the people of gnosis and obedience are given from the lights of the beauty of the divine countenance such pleasure that worldly luxury cannot be compared with it. In the first place, rather, it exceeds, it exceeds it beyond measure. The two bear no relation apart from sharing a common name. The last person to exit from hell is given the like of the world ten times over, as is reported in the Hadith. This does not mean a multiplication of size and area, but a multiplication of, spir of spiritual substance, such as or just as the jewel is several times more valuable than the horse, not because of its weight or size, but because of the essence of wealth, making its value that of ten horses. Know that the prohibition of these pleasures and giving them to disbelievers is not in the same category as a man prohibiting his slave from pleasure out of anger or choice, such that it could conceivably be changed. Rather, it is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibiting white from being black in the state of whiteness or hot from being cold in the state of heat. Change is not conceivable in this regard. An example of this is that an old, decrepit, ignorant man who is naturally stupid and has never experienced scholarship or learned a language says to an immaculate scholar, pour upon my heart some of your most intricate knowledge. 
So the scholar says to him, indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited from ignorant people. The meaning of this is that the preparation or that preparation to receive it is only acquired through natural intelligence and substantial experience. Studying the subject after having learned the nomenclature, Arabic, and many other things. If the preparation is null and void, then it is impossible to give, just as it is impossible for heat to be made cold while the cold remains. So do not think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry with you and thus punishes you as retribution. Then fool yourself with, with hope for forgiveness and say, why does he punish me when my disobedience does not harm him? Rather, punishment is a consequence of disobedience, like death is a consequence of poison. Know that this regret is, ever, ever, is everlasting, because it's, ta it's starting point is the opposition of two qualities whose opposition never ceases. Just Imam Ghazali in, uh, in the Ihya, in the revival, uh, he does talk about the, uh, the, uh, He talks about this life as being very short and negligent compared to eternal life in both senses. Uh, so one would, uh, when he uh, when he spoke about the uh, reasons why uh, people commit sin and the uh, the solution, the treatment, uh, the medicine for uh, for these. One medicine is to remember that this life is uh, is short, so you would uh, avoid you you would avoid uh, a certain pleasure when it's uh, when it's haram, uh, and you will have that which is halal but everlasting in the year after. Know that this uh, regret is everlasting because its uh, starting point is the opposition of two qualities whose opposition never ceases. For example, someone who ties a rope about his neck or his foot only feels pain due to the opposition of two qualities, not due to the form of the rope and its attachment. His natural tendency is to fall to the ground. Yet the force of the rope prevents this natural tendency from taking effect. Thus, these two opposing forces produce pain for him. Likewise, is the human spirit, which is naturally of the divine spiritual world. By its nature, it has an affinity and longing for the sublime world, the spiritual world, and to be in the highest company. However, the fetters and chains of desire pull it to the lowest of the law. That is, worldly desires. They constitute an ephemeral quality that overcomes the natural quality and prevents it from achieving its mission. Pain is produced from between them. Fire also causes pain due to opposition. Metaphorically speaking, for indeed, what is agreeable to the body is that its constituent parts say, stay together. And fire opposes this constitution by separating between the parts. If you had never seen fire and were told that a light, everything will hurt you if it touches your body, you would scoff, it, you scoff at it and say, how can a thing with no solid, solidity hurt through touch? Know that mutual opposition is painful. Whether the reason is external or internal, the scorpion's poison in any body part hurts due to its extreme coldness. 
that is contrary to the body's heat. So do not think that all pains come from the outside. Regarding poison, um, in the old days, they had the theory about uh, the four uh, states, and medicine was, and of course, uh, um, dependent on, on this notion. In general, uh, uh, some poison uh, is like protein, and uh, what it does, it does uh, cause a clot in the veins, and thus you'll have uh, a heart attack. And then there is this, you know, there's poison that attacks the nervous uh, system. This is not our. Uh, Topic, but I thought that uh, at least a passing remark will uh, will help uh, you know qualify this uh, statement. If you see the scorpion bite from the outside or the scorpion bit from the outside, then know that the pain of the tooth and pain of the eye are no less than that. The only reason for them is the flow of internal fluid that is contrary to the composition of the eye and the tooth. Yet this is no easier to bear than the bite of the snake or the, scorp the scorpion. Know also the mutual opposition of qualities upon the heart hurts the heart with the pain. That is no less than uh, what hurts the tooth or the eye. An example is uh, in the weakest of qualities. If you ask a stingy yet ostentatious person to give publicly in front of people by whom he wishes to be known for his generosity, then his heart will hurt due to the mutual opposition of the, of the two qualities. Stinginess dictates that he does not give, yet love of status dictates that he would that he should give. His heart is torn between these two qualities, like a person who is split into by a saw. We have said many times that uh, if a woman marries a stingy man, uh, she dies every day, maybe more than once, metaphorically speaking. The wife of the generous, she would die natural death once in her lifetime, at the end of her lifetime, rather. But to marry a stingy person, subhanAllah, a stingy person is stingy with everything, with kind words, with treatment, with uh, everything, not only money. This is the simile of regretting what has passed. Its immensity is commensurate to whatever is revealed of the majesty of what was missed. You will not really know, you will not really know it in this world, but rather in the world of revelation. Alas, this is tremendous news that you turn away from. Know that these three types have an order. The first type encountered by the tormented dead person in the ordeal of being separated from desired things. This is the viper of loving the world for this reason. It is related to the grave. Nevertheless, it, it comes beforehand because the majority of things in the dead person's heart at the time of death are what he leaves behind in terms of status, wealth, position, and luxury when he departs from the, from the world. Thereafter, they have their repulsive spiritual realities exposed to him. This occurs with the complete engulfment of death and the remoteness of the familiar veiling of the worldly qualities. The more assiduous a person's preparation for death is, the more accepting he is of these revelations. Here is where the humiliation of ignominy is spurred upon him. Hence, it is related to the resurrection. 
because it is a middle ground between the grave and the permanent abode. For this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, A day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a day when Allah will not humiliate the Prophet and those who believed with him. That is the day of resurrection. As for regret over the passing of beloved things, it is the last to overcome a person at the permanent abode in hell. Therein he will say, أَفِيضُ عَلَيْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ أَوْ مِمَّا رَزَقُ اللَّهِ Give us some water or some of what Allah has provided you with. And of course, this is before the uh, wall would be uh, established between them, that will separate between them. Uh, on one side of the wall, there is mercy, and on other, there is uh, uh, torment, there is uh, punishment, there is, uh, yeah, it is severe punishment. Same wall with two different sides. This is because the remoteness from the familiarity of the world may lighten the torment of being torn from it and prolonged acquaintance with this revelation may entail the end of ignominy. Ignominy is disgrace for the form of torment by disgrace is at the first strike of ignominy. Thereafter, disgrace and ignominy become what somewhat customary. Then, with the languishing of disgrace and ignominy comes regret over the passing of beloved things. For the magnitude of what has been missed becomes manifest. Finally, regret over the missed opportunity remains, and it is likely that it has no end. You know all of this decisively if you know yourself, and know that you will not die. Rather, your eyes will be blinded. Your ears will be dispossessed of hearing, and your body parts will decompose. As for the reality by which you are, you are you, it does not perish with death at all, only its state changes. Everything you knew from before, including your inner perception and your, inner, your desires, stays with you. You are hurt only by departing from what you love, being disgraced by the appearance of what is revealed in this state, and by your regret over missing something, the magnitude of which is known only after death, not before. All of these are precursors to the actual physical punishment, which is also true. Its promise is well known, as it has come in the Quranic verses and hadiths. Suffice yourself from this amount or ex of exhortation for now. For indeed, the last several pages of speaking on the subject just about went over the limit for a book like this. True, fools and ignorant people will inevitably require further motivation. However, they are too base-minded to be heeded. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَأَعْرَضْ عَمَّنْ تَوَلَّ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَلَمْ يُرِدْ إِلَّا الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا ذَلِكَ مَبْلَغُهُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ Turn away. From those who ignore our signs and want nothing but the worldly life, that is the extent of their knowledge. Turn away from those who ignore our signs. Ignore our signs. Ignore, abandon, uh, leave uh, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, probably, is better. So we will stop with this, thus completing the 40 principles and the Jews of the Qur'an. Whoever seeks more than this should seek it from the book of remembering death, from the revival. 
for the overwhelming objective of this book is to suggest and incite a desire for the careful study mentioned therein. Through it, the secrets of the religious sciences are revealed, and no one flees from seeking that except someone infatuated with the world, who seeks from the sciences only what he can use as a net to catch worldly things, or a tool for acquiring the prohibited. The sciences of that book are not suitable for him at all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for us and the best to order our affairs. O oh Allah, bless our Master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his companions, عنهم, and those who follow their excellent ways until the day of recompense. Ameen. There is a short epilogue uh, I think it, though it is short probably it, it makes sense to uh, to read it separately and we'll do that uh, tomorrow inshallah سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت ونتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته